further side of, of that door. It is only just fun. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call to order the July 12, 2017 meeting of the Ascension Parish Planning Commission. I would ask, uh, we have a, well, we'll go ahead and do the Pledge of Allegiance first. If everybody please rise. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, let the record reflect that all, count, all commissioners, with the exception of Mr. Bishop and Mr. Chasson, are present. Um, and we'll do an introduction of staff. Stacy Webb, Secretary for Planning and Development. O'Neill Parrington, I'm here in, sitting in for Cody Martin tonight. Jerome Fournier, Director of Planning and Development. Eric Poche, Parish Planner. Lance Brock, Zoning Official. Sean Chereau, Engineering Review Agency. Thank you. Item number five on the agenda is the Chairman's comments. The Chair has no comments for planning. I would say um, if you plan to speak tonight on either a planning issue or a zoning issue, please sign in so we have a card from you. If you're here for the zoning matters, which are upcoming, uh, that'll be during the zoning meeting, which will immediately proceed or follow this meeting, but you'll have a minute to, to sign in at that time. I would also ask, in order to keep the meeting moving, you adhere to the three-minute time limit. You will get to have your say, but we just have to keep it at three minutes so we can keep the meeting moving in an orderly fashion. All right, moving on to item number seven on the agenda, the minutes from the June 14th, um, 2017 Planning Commission meeting. I need a motion to approve or deny the minutes Move and the written approve. decision. Motion by Mr. Dumas, second by Mr. Christie. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All in, any in opposition? Hearing none, motion passes. Item number eight is the consent agenda. Item 8A is an affidavit of mortgage declaration for the Todd F. and Vanessa Blair. Northern portion of Track C, 35479, Highway 74, Geismar, Louisiana. Item 8B has been removed from the agenda. 8C is an affidavit of mortgage declaration for Patricia Thompson. Track A1, 10333, John Savoy <coughs> Road, Santa Mall, 70074. Do I have a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. Moved to approve so by Mr. Dumas, second by Mr. Furman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none. Motion passes. Item 9 on the agenda is a public hearing to approve or deny the following family partitions. Item 9A is the Stephen Babin uh, property tracks B1, B2, and B3, BM Aguillard and Associates. Hey, all doing this afternoon? Brian Aguilar, BM Aguilar and Associates, and here presenting this map. Mr. Todd Luquette for these family partition on these lots. I think everything's been addressed with the staff and we're asking for your approval. All right, staff comments? Uh, yes, no comments. Everything is in accordance with the ordinance and, and as soon as all the documents that are, are required are turned in, if you guys approve it, we'll get it signed by you and recorded. All right. We'll go ahead and open a public hearing on this. Ms. Stacy, has anybody signed but to speak on this issue? Yeah, nobody has signed up. We will close the public hearing. Do we have um, any comments, questions by the commission or a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Furman, second by Mr. Dumas. All in favor? Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, motion passes. Item 9B is Thank the you. Joseph Corona property, lots K1A, K1B, uh, McGlynn Taylor, Inc. Ellen Jackson with McGlynn Taylor Incorporated, asking for your approval. Staff. Uh, all requirements of the ordinance have been met. Uh, all eyes have been addressed on the map, and as soon as the conveyance documents are, are recorded, uh, if you guys approve it, we'll be ready to get it signed and, and taken care of. Right. We'll open a public hearing on this matter. Is anybody signed to speak on this? No. No one signed up to speak. We'll close the public hearing. Motion, questions, comments by the commission. Just have a question. Does, does lot K1A, is that going to have two residences <coughs> on it? Yes. Yes, it is. It's existing, yes. <coughs> yes, the owner and the daughter now is the direct relative of the owner of K1A. And they're not exceeding the maximum density allowed for the zoning. And, it's, and the two homes on the one lot is permissive? It's yes. Permissible. Okay. All right. Just want to confirm. That's all. 
you have a motion on that? Right. I'll make a move to approve. Moved by Mr. Dumas, second. Second. By Mr. Schecksneider, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition, hearing none, motion passes. Moving on to um, 9C, <coughs> Paul D. LSR Senior Estates, lot 181 and 1A2, Quality Engineering and Design. Good evening. George McCallum with Quality Engineering and Surveying, representing the Paul LSR Estate, asking for approval <coughs> on this family partition. Staff. Uh, comments have been sent. When comments are addressed, if you approve it and the uh, uh, conveyance documents are, are received, we can go ahead and get it signed and recorded. We'll go ahead and open a public hearing on this matter. Has anyone signed up to speak? We'll close the public hearing. Questions, comments, and or a motion by the staff, uh, by the commission. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Moved by Mr. Schecksneider, second. second. By Mr. Furman, all in favor? Aye. Any Thank opposition here? None. Motion passes. All right. And item 9D, the Philip Helm property, lots JCT-B-1 and JCT-B-2. Mr. Quintlock, good evening, sir. Good evening. All comments have been addressed except for number one, which is a uh, issue of concern about uh, being a simple division. It's where Irvin Vilar Jr. Road comes in on the east side of lot JCT-B-2. That is a very, very low area. And so, matter of fact, we weren't even able to set that particular northeast corner monument. Uh, at the time, we have to go back when water recedes. So it's not, it's not certainly feasible to build a road, road there. So the only option was to come in where the existing driveway was, off of Urban Velour Road to the north. Also, comment number... Nine. Uh, there's like a little little boat launch and they want that depicted a little better as far as the shoreline is concerned and so when we were going back to set the corner we'll make that adjustment in, in there and have a 25 foot drainage servitude around that particular uh, boat launch area where it makes a little u-shape in the in the shoreline staff yes i mean it, it follows the ordinance and as soon as all the comments are addressed if you guys approve it we'll go ahead and get it taken care of all right. We'll open a public hearing on this. Ms. Stacy, anybody signed up? Close the public hearing. Any questions, comments by the commission? I'll make a motion to approve, uh, subject to compliance with the uh, with the comments. Moved by Mr. Dumas, second. second. By Mr. Christie, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition here? None. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right, item 10 is a public hearing to approve or deny the following subdivision final plats. <coughs> item number 10A is Pelican Point Golf Community, 13th filing, part 3, the Greens. Phase four, part two, Ferris Engineering and Surveying, LLC. Good evening. Uh, Clint Kennerly with Ferris Engineering here, representing the developer, Doug Diaz, uh, asking for your approval on the final plat, 13th filing. Stay. Yes, I mean, all comments in the process of being addressed. There's a couple of other items that need to be taken care of, and you make your approval contingent on completing those, those items. Those punch list items? Yes. Okay. We'll go ahead and open a public hearing on this. Nobody? We'll close the public hearing. Questions, comments, and or a motion by the commission. I move to approve contingent upon the completion of the, uh, the flat, final flat. Okay. Second. Motion by Mr. Furman, second by Mr. Schecksneider. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition hearing none, motion passes. Item number 10B, Galvez Trails, MR Engineering and Surveying, LLC. Mr. Mickey, Mr. Robertson. Mickey Robertson with MR Engineering and Surveying. Uh, we have addressed all the punch list items for Galvez Trails, and we ask for your approval. Thank you. Staff? Yeah, <laughs> it, about everything's been done. Uh, I think we got to get the maintenance bond. I think is the only other thing that's that's due to come in. Uh, there is a um, uh, a question of whether or not the developer is going to try to secure a performance bond uh, to to take care of the public utilities. I don't know. Has that has that area been addressed? From, from your standpoint? Are you asking me? Yes. Yeah, no, we're going to wait for utilities to be finished uh, getting installed. They're almost done. Okay. So. All right. So that that's not going to be an issue. So as soon as all the comments have been addressed, we'll go ahead and get it taken care of. All right. Public hearing? Or uh, we'll open a public hearing. I'm sorry, Ms. Stacy. Has anybody signed up? Close the public hearing. Any questions, comments, and or? Um, I got a question. Mr. Yeah. Uh, no problem with recording the flat before the utilities are done without the bond? 
Well, no, we're not going to record the plat until he said they're going to wait until the utilities are done, and we'll have to inspect it, and that'll be done, and then we'll get it taken care of. All right, I just want to make sure yeah. that I understood. I understood what you were saying. Okay. Yes. Hey, Mr. Chairman. Um, on here, it also says that uh, Mr. Lambert, or Councilman Lambert, uh, did admit to discuss any uh, development and drainage issues. Was all those resolved? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, to approve um, and withhold, subject to completing of the utilities and, and submitting a maintenance bond that complies with the parish requirements. We have a motion by Mr. Dumas, second? Second. Second by Mr. Shakespeare. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item number 11, um, a little bit different. This is a public hearing to recommend approval or denial to the parish council um, for an amendment to the Ascension Parish Unified Land Development Code. And this is a revision to ordinance section 17.409D of the subdivision regulations in the Unified Land Development Code pertaining to the use of performance surety bonds and specifically uh, <coughs> removing those um, in lieu of uh, more uh, stricter compliance to the code before final plat approval. Mr. Funia, you want to address that, please? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, uh, staff's recommending that um, the commission consider this item of removing that caveat or that, that ability in the Unified Land Development Code to um, for the use of performance surety bonds. In the past, um, about the past year, we've had several occasions where a developer hasn't, has not completed uh, necessary infrastructure in the, in the uh, subdivision, and they have posted a surety bond in order to assure the um, completion of those facilities. Um, as, that, as the construction's taking place, we have recorded uh, uh, the plat, they can sell lots. Um, even though some of the construction items have not been completed. What we would recommend is that we remove um, from the final plat consideration any, any items, any improvements that are not publicly owned. These would typically be the water, which is under a private utility company, and also the electricals, which is a private utility company. So anything else within the public right-of-way or within a public servitude would have to be completed prior to us um, bringing the final plat for your consideration as a consent calendar <coughs> item instead of a public hearing. Um, the reason for that is um, uh, once we have a final plat uh, typically under consideration, all the improvements have been installed. So this would kind of expedite the process in terms of improvement, but it was also um, alleviate the problem with the parish having to go out for a contract and for a bid, number one, in contracting the improvements on a, on a project that's been uh, left idle, you know, for whatever reason. Um, right now, the market's pretty hot. We, we don't have that consideration. All the properties are being um, sold and, and everything's doing ex expeditiously. But we would recommend that we remove this as an item uh, just to keep the parish um, out, of, out of problems. Um, in order to pull a bond, we have to go before a judge. We have to get a judgment from the court. Um, once that judgment's rendered, then we would go out to contract um, and, and contract for the facilities, and we would have to build them ourselves. So this is something to keep the parish out of trouble, uh, we feel, and um, we think it would be a a necessary change to, to the to the ordinance. So, and and the the problem with the with the bond process as it stands right now is it's cost money to seize that bond if we have to. So, if if a developer abandons uh, abandons his work in order to finish it, we're st the parish is going to be behind not only on collecting the bond, but then hopefully the bond would cover what work ne is entailed that needs to be done. Precisely, yeah. And then the, the give is that it streamlines the final plat approval to a consent agenda item rather than having an open public hearing. And really the public hearing is done uh, when the plat's preliminarily approved for the subdivision. That's is that correct. correct? Um, yeah. Items can always be pulled off the consent calendar for discussion purposes, but yes. All right, we're going to go ahead and open a public hearing on this matter. Uh, Ms. Stacy, has anybody signed up to speak on this? 
we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. This is something, uh, and I'll just tell the commission that this is something that I know I've discussed with uh, Jerome and, and the planning staff for uh, several months now. It seems to make sense um, because the final plat that comes up usually before us, we're dealing with punch list items and things of that nature where there's been substantial work already done on the property and it would be very difficult for us to come in and then deny a final plat. Um, also, I think the surety bond issue is something that um, while it provides security, it's really not adequate security in the long run with the cost of uh, and the trouble of seizing it if necessary. So uh, something I think we should recommend to the council as an amendment to the code. I had a question. W would this apply to a subdivision <coughs> where the roads are going to be private? Um, because it, it, the way I read it is public right of ways and public servitudes that are publicly owned. Yeah. But if a guy, if a developer comes in and wants to develop subdivision and a gated subdivision that's got private roads, would he still have to provide a surety bond, and would we have to go through that? No, or the, should the we not include that the, all of that? The improvements would have to be installed, you know, before we'd approve the plan, even if it's a private road. Well. I guess the way I'm reading this, it says public right of way and public servitudes that are publicly owned and maintained. It doesn't. It doesn't include private roads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can certainly make the adjustment if we need to. But yeah. uh, as it stands right now, we're looking at public, public facilities, public improvements in a public right of way. So we can address that on the private level if we need to. You want to make that change right now and make that recommendation as we go forward to the council. Right. We can certainly do that. Mm -hmm. I, I think it needs to be that. all inclusive. I, you know. Yeah. 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 We would agree with that change for sure. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, and or a motion? I, I'm going to make a motion to recommend to the parish council um, that they that they adopt the necessary ordinance to approve this change. However, the change should be written in such a way so that it includes uh, private right-of-ways, imp improvements on private roads and private right-of-ways. Okay. We have a motion by Mr. Dumas. Second. Second by Mr. Schecksneider. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, the uh, motion passes. And uh, staff, y'all can make that, uh, that, that adjustment. Um, move on to uh, number 12 is the staff report. Staff has no report other than that. Item number 13 is the engineering staff report. Yes, the uh, engineering report for this month has been, um, uh, I guess we add to the standard report. Um, the first part I do is just give everyone a sense of the state of uh, subdivisions in the parish. At the time, right now there are approximately 13 projects. Um, that are in construction, I mean 13 subdivisions, and right now there's one set of construction plans that are in the, the review process. <coughs> the uh, second part of the engineer's staff report is there's a requirement in the ordinance to just notify the planning commission if a set of construction documents have not been submitted um, for review after first receiving their preliminary plat approval. And so we're just going to make this a standing item to notify the planning commission of those projects, and there's also another requirement if a project has not um, started construction after a certain time frame, uh, a preliminary plat also. So the two projects that are currently on the list right now is the uh, Ascension Business Park. It was improved in January 2017, and also the Black Bayou Estates. It was improved in January 2017. So I uh, may have to get with, uh, consult with Jerome and um, O'Neill. I don't know if there's a official motion or anything by the Planning Commission that needs to be made when it approaches six-month mark or if it's just more of a notification I might have to I might have to rely on O'Neill or uh, Jerome regarding what's the proper steps the code the code requires that the ERA notify the Planning Commission of any plats that have been preliminarily approved if there's a six-month time period if it's reaching that time period it also says that the Planning Commission has the right to rescind the plat. It doesn't say you have to move or motion or anything. Uh, when I spoke with Cody about this last week, basically their job is to notify you, and then it's up to you to decide whether you want to bring it forward maybe at a, at a subsequent meeting to, to make a determination as to whether, you know, what you want to do with it. 
you have the right. It doesn't say you have to do anything. Do we know, and there's, there's two, two plats that are reaching that six-month time period? Yes. Do we know why there's nothing that's happened on those on that prop those properties? Well, and I think one of the things that Cody and I spoke about was that it's something that if you guys want to know information about it, then you can say, well, next month we would like to put that on those are two items on the agendas and have the mm -hmm. applicants come in and either ask for an extension or explain to us what's mm -hmm. going on or what their status is or, or what have you. Yeah, I think that's a relatively good idea. I think it's a good idea. If, if something's been approved and it's just sitting out there and languishing, um, you know, before we take any action, it could be that they're trying to get s some Financing things together some and finances and anything probably, else. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I think that's a good idea. I don't know if we uh, – it probably is something we have to move to have them come in at the next meeting. We can't just – we have to act as a commission on that, I would think. Do we I have to have uh, a motion? Do we have to make a motion to say, hey, we want them to come in, meet with us? Uh, have the public hearing and just explain, give us an explanation of what's going on. Mr. Chairman. Uh, staff, uh, is it normal uh, you know, business, I guess, for the, for, uh, the planning department to contact uh, such a developer prior to the six-month deadline to, to uh, so become aware that the, the deadline is approaching and he needs to address this? We have not typically in the past. We haven't. No, I, didn't. I mean, we, we can make that a matter of policy and mm -hmm. start doing that when we start seeing that we're approaching that deadline, mm -hmm. but we, we're also obligated to bring it before you, you know, as right. we're doing tonight. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I think the code's clear. You just need to notify us in six months, and if they're paying attention, sure. they'll get notified there. I don't think you need to burden yourself any more than, than you already are. But I'm going to make a motion, or just a motion to that, uh, you notify these applicants that we're going to we're going to we're going to be revisiting these items next month, and that uh, they should they should be here to address any questions that the commission may have. Um, at which time we'll consider uh, action on on the application. Second. All right. Motion by Mr. Dumas. Second by Mr. Furman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None in opposition. Motion passes. Anything else on engineering staff report? No. Okay. Uh, next item is either motion to adjourn. Move. All right, and we will return in a few minutes for the zoning meeting. Thank you. Meeting's adjourned.